There's one more hydrocarbon thing I want to share with you before we go on. We already had these two phases, right? And we saw that there was a big difference. We were paying a lot to move a molecule into water. But it's instructive to just remember that there is a third phase here too. And that's if I take this liquid and eventually freeze it into some sort of crystal or order it at least. So what are the corresponding free energies here? Well, we already knew some of them, right? Here we knew that delta H was roughly zero. T delta S was minus 6.7 and delta G was equal to plus 6.7. Here we do the same thing as we did before. So that would get us at delta H is roughly minus 0.65. I do not know this by heart. That's why I'm looking at my notes. And T delta S equals roughly minus 0 0.7. And as a consequence, delta G would be roughly plus 0.05. And here I would have delta H is roughly plus 0 0.65. T delta S would be minus 6.0. And as a consequence, delta G would be roughly 6.65. The interesting part here is this, although the arrow covers it, but do you see how small delta G is here? So what we learn from that is that if I take that hydrocarbon, I'm going to, that hydrocarbon that is now in water, but very unhappy, he is going to be thrilled by being moved to a phase where there are no waters. So a hydrophobic phase to separate it. Again, the hydrophobic effect. But once I've done that, the difference in the next phase, taking this hydrophobic phase and ordering it, has a very small delta G value. It's does, I would even say it doesn't even matter whether this is positive or negative because it's so small. Remember, you should compare this to KT, which is 0 0.6. This is virtually nil in comparison to that. And that means that this is the key process, while this is just so small extra polishing. And that leads us to the first result we can translate to proteins.